welcome back to this video on cost of quality the concept of quality cost was first introduced by Fagenbaum in 1956 in his Harvard Business Review article prior to that it was understood that higher quality means higher cost because to produce a higher quality product you need to spend more money you need to buy a better material you need to put more manpower you need to do more work so that's the reason that there was an understanding that if you have to produce a better quality you will have to spend more money for that so fagenbaum classified cost of quality into two major chunks the visible cost and the invisible cost so the visible cost is also known as the tangible cost the tangible which you can see which you can feel which you can understand but then there is a hidden part of the cost of quality which is invisible cost so invisible cost is also known as intangible cost of quality so let's understand these two costs here so visible cost is something which is quite obvious which includes things like rejection whatever things gets rejected there is a cost for that there is a cost for rework there is a cost for repair and then there is a cost for inspection so all these costs which are very obvious are the tangible or the visible cost coming to the second cost which is invisible cost which is a sort of a indirect loss which is because of lost sale excess inventory and when i say excess inventory because inventory also costs money so if you are keeping lot of inventory you are tying down your lot of cash in inventory and which is a financial loss then because of quality if you have to put additional control if you have to put additional procedures that is also a cost the cost of complaint handling complaint investigation fines legal fees all these are invisible costs which do not appear to be the cost at the very first look but obviously in long run these are the costs which you have to pay for your poor quality so summarizing here this slide cost of quality could be summarized as two big chunks which is the visible and invisible cost so we will break down these costs further down in next few slides to understand the cost of quality in better detail dr fagan baum classified the cost of quality into four categories prevention cost appraisal cost internal failure cost and external failure cost so if you look at first two item which is prevention and appraisal so these two costs are costs of conformance so this is the cost to ensure that the product conforms to the requirements then the second two costs are which is internal and external failure cost these are costs of non conformance so you can also call these two things as the cost of good quality so these are the cost of good quality making sure that the quality is good and these two costs are the cost of poor quality because these are because of the poor quality when you have internal and external failure so this is how the cost of quality is divided into four categories prevention appraisal internal failure and external failure so on next four slides we will go through each of these four categories of cost of quality to understand what these are so let's have a quick recap of what we talked on the previous slide we said that the cost of quality can be divided into two parts cost of conformance and cost of non conformance and the cost of conformance can be further divided into prevention cost and appraisal cost and the cost of non conformance could be divided into cost of internal failure and cost of external failures so having talked about this now let's start with the first cost here which is the prevention cost 
so the prevention cost is the cost to prevent problem cost to prevent defects so how do we prevent that we prevent that by having a proper planning by having education and training by conducting design reviews or any other activity which will help us in preventing the defect at the first place itself so if you do something which will avoid defect would fall under prevention cost this could even include having an quality management system established because that will help you in preventing defects or performing capability analysis making sure that what your machines are capable of that is also part of prevention cost so there could be many examples of costs which would help you in avoiding the defect at very first place those all costs will fall under prevention cost so in real life what you would like to do is you would like to spend more on prevention and appraisal so that you can reduce internal and external failure costs and out of prevention and appraisal also your preference should be to put more investment in prevention even rather than appraisal because if you can prevent the defect itself from the beginning you probably don't need to appraise that also you don't need to inspect that also so this is the most important cost in four parts which we said here prevention appraisal internal failure and external failure so give more emphasis to prevention cost so that you can reduce other costs so if you invest a dollar here you would save more than a dollar in your internal failure external failure or even appraisal cost so that's the reason i'm emphasizing more on this cost which is the prevention cost so coming to the second group of quality cost which is appraisal cost so we talked about prevention earlier so here we are talking about appraisal appraisal is the cost you spend for testing checking appraising those are the cost which will fall under this category which is appraisal cost so examples here are inspection and testing whatever inspection and testing you are doing will be under appraisal cost supplier acceptance sampling so supplier provides you a group of pieces a lot and whatever sampling you are doing out of that and based on that sampling you are deciding to accept or reject that is also under appraisal cost third example here is audit processes so audit is also appraisal cost but here there is a little bit of catch here any auditing which you do for example in case of supplier any audit which you do after placing an order is your appraisal cost but anything which you do prior to placing order for example the pre qualification of supplier those would be considered as prevention cost because you are investing that upfront as a part of planning upfront as a part of prevention so that you don't land up with a wrong supplier so at this moment probably you take a minute off stop this video and think in your work process what are the costs related to prevention and what are the costs related to appraisal that will help you in understanding this topic and because these are the costs where you want to spend more so that you avoid internal and external failures so on earlier two slides we talked about prevention and appraisal so those two costs were related to conformance of quality now this slide and next slide which is internal and external failure cost is related to non conformance or the cost of poor quality so let's look at the example of internal failure costs any cost which you spend for internal failures this failure is within your own facility before this lands up into the hand of a customer so those are internal failure costs example here are in process scrap and rework so any scrap which you produce out of your process or any rework which you do the money spent on rework is your internal failure cost troubleshooting and repair that's your internal failure cost any design changes are your internal failure cost and if 
your processes are not behaving well so for that you need to keep a buffer or inventory so that you get sufficient good quality of product then the excess inventory which you are keeping the cost of keeping that inventory is also your internal failure cost you re-inspect you retest or rework your items those are your internal failure costs and many a times after inspection you find that the item is not fit for the purpose so what you do is you downgrade that you sell that item for less so that is also your internal failure cost so coming to the fourth and last category of cost of quality which is external failure cost this is the cost probably you should be trying to avoid at all cost do whatever you want to do but make sure that your product doesn't fail in hands of a customer so depending upon the product this failure could be disastrous this failure could cause fatality this failure could cause a great harm to the customer so make sure that if your product falls in those categories particularly you have to take very special care that you avoid the external failure cost because many times these external failure costs could even lead to the total collapse of the organization because if your failures are so severe you might land up into some legal issue and your whole company might get finished because of those failures so this is something which you need to take care of that so examples of external failure costs are sales returns and allowances so whatever sales comes back the customer returns the product that's your external failure cost service level agreement penalties so there is a service level agreement for example in case of my website the website host gave me a guarantee that my website is going to be on for 99.8 percent of time so if the website is down then I get my money back. So that's a service level agreement penalty. So that's your external failure cost. Complaint handling. The mechanism, the department which you put for handling complaints is also part of your external failure cost. And then if you need to send your people for repair, field service labor, part cost, warranty obligations, those are also your external failure cost and one thing which is not listed here is product recall so in many a cases company spends a huge amount of money for those product recalls and probably you would remember the product recall from toyota recently a few years ago and there are many other product recalls for which companies had to spend millions and billions of dollars for those product recalls getting that fixed and giving it back to the customer so make sure that you spend well enough in case of prevention and appraisal so that you could avoid internal and external failure costs so the last topic in this discussion of cost of quality is why do we need to measure the cost of quality why do we need it because management understands the language of money rather than talking about the percent defects the defect rate product repair rate or any other rate management will understand much better if you put those numbers in terms of money how much money do you spend in appraisal how much money do you spend in case of inspection how much money you spend in case of external or external failures that is going to give management an indication of where do we stand this will help in quantifying the costs because once you quantify the cost then you can set the target once you know how much you are spending this year you can set up the target for next year so if you know your numbers well management would be more than willing to spend money on prevention and appraisal because that way management knows that any amount of money they spend on prevention and appraisal is helping in reducing external and internal failure costs so that's the reason which will require you to monitor the cost of quality.
so with this we finish our discussion on the topic of fundamentals of the cost of quality Thank <music> you.